Randy? I think so. I'm Ted Cook. It's my brother Jason. We are the smiling faces of reallycheapfloors.com. Um, we get to come together once a week. I really can't stand to be around him that much any, any more than that. But once a week we sit down and we answer the questions that you've sent us. We, we actually kind of like doing this because... Um, we, we've been in this business a really long time. About, what, 45 years ago, 47 years ago, our parents bought uh, a local floor covering store and we were put to work at a young age the way children used to be done. They were made to work and we had to work a lot and sometimes we didn't like it and other times it was okay. Um, Jason wound up going more into the installation side of it and doing that for, what, 25 years? Uh, yeah. Yeah, about 25 years. He went. He installed, you know, carpet, vinyl. He uh, started installing pre-finished wood and laminate. And then, uh, on a whim, one time, my mom and, or my dad decided we needed some finishing equipment. So, Jason found out one day he was going to be a hardwood finisher. So he's done everything in, in the installation side. I wasn't uh, hardworking enough to do that. So they they left me inside, and I worked in sales and purchasing. So between the two of us, uh, we've done just just about all the different aspects that there are in retail and and we enjoy getting your questions and answering answering those questions to the best of our abilities um so we're going to get started and uh jason's going to take the first one what's the difference between finishes like satin and matte okay um satin finish is roughly 40 percent gloss level um uh, compared to matte matte's 20% gloss level or, or less. So it's just how shiny it's it is. It's just how shiny it is. Is there any difference in wear? No. They still have the same amount of coats and hardness and everything. It's just it has no sheen. And to me, I think matte finishes are getting more popular, don't you? Yeah, yeah but I'm um, going to disagree with Jason a little bit. He said they wear the same. I think they do. Definitions of wear will vary between even two brothers. My definition of wear... Give my pen back. No. My definition of wear is change in gloss level due to abrasive wear, okay? So if, if we have a glossy floor down over time, if we get some abrasive wear on that, by definition, the wear is the same. But in reality, a glossy floor will show that change in appearance more than a low gloss floor. Don't you agree? I would agree with that. But, but I'm... Right. I guess I'm saying the hardness factor. The hardness is the same. That's everything exactly right. is the same on right, that. Right, right. So yes. if you look at the warranty, a warranty on the floor will say it won't wear through to the back. Gloss level has nothing to do with it. But as far as a change in appearance, I think a high gloss floor will show a change in appearance over time more quickly than a low gloss. But we'll fight about that later. Okay. okay. We'll take it out back. We'll take it out back. That's right. Okay. Um, Next one, Nucor has a 22 mil LVP and a 6.5 mil millimeter overall thickness for 269. Does your Mills River product match up? Um, the problem here is the Nucor, like all the 22 mils that I'm aware of on the market, is a WPC floor. Uh, what that means is it has the soft core, which is Really good if you need extra insulation for temp against temperature change or for sound. The downside is that softer core dents really easily. So if you whether it's the new core or the Traffic Master or Life Proof, if you go to the websites, read the reviews, okay, from customers that have bought it, and you're going to see a common theme is my floor did it really easily. Here, you know, I paid three dollars, I paid four dollars, it was twenty mils, it's whatever. Um, None of those will keep a floor from denting if it's a WPC floor. Now, our Mills River floor is an SPC. That's a stone polymer core. Um, when you look at the two of them, it's, it's very obvious what the difference is. And you can read some of our blogs and, and look at some of our graphics to learn more about that. But an SPC floor is much, much harder. It doesn't have the insulating quality. So if insulating is what you want, maybe you want to go with the uh, WPC. But most people want a floor that will stay with them a while that looks the same 20 years from now and if you really if you want that longevity and the no dents you better go with an spc like our mills river our mills river is a 20 mil product with a cork back for a dollar 99 cents so I, I think our mills river stacks up against any product in the nation just to be honest with you 
Okay, let's see. My next question, your cabin grade flooring is so cheap, is it worth it? Your cabin prices are lower than other sellers and the other sellers don't have much of it anyways. Um, once you remember that only about 5% of production goes into cabin grade floors, that would explain why there's not much out there. Um, we have a partnership with uh, the company that probably makes the largest amount of solid in the United States. We take all of their cabin solid. We also take all of their uh, what they call blue label engineered. It's not called cabin because it's cleaner than the typical cabin and we don't want to devalue it by calling it cabin. Um, but our, our cabin, why is it so cheap? Well, you, you've got to remember when, when first quality wood is made, there's a cost involved. Okay, so the manufacturer, they, maybe they buy the lumber or maybe they, they grow their own, they mill it, uh, they, they finish it, they box it, all those add cost, all those processes add cost. So they put a price on the top of it and it sells. When you're dealing with cabin grade, it, it doesn't work quite like that. It's a supply and demand issue. If the warehouse is full, the price comes down. If there's none of it out there, the price goes up. So we, um, we are the largest dealer of cabin grades, uh, hardwood flooring in the United States. We, we, have a, we have deals with two or three different companies where we take their cabin and we present it to, uh, to our customers. We have to be careful. Each company's cabin can be different. Um, most of what we have in solid comes from one company and it's really clean. So not only do we have the cheapest cabin grade wood flooring in the United States, we honestly, we actually have the best as well. But, uh, you know, give us a call. We, uh, there's a lot more information on our, on our uh, website. Uh, we did a blog about cabin grade flooring that's very informative. If you have more questions, check that out. Okay, Jason, how much should it cost to install 1,500 square feet of hardwood flooring? Uh, it's according to the regions you live in, really. Yeah. And um, is it on concrete or wood? Yeah, what kind of flooring is it? Yeah, um, you know, in our area, um, Western North Carolina, guys, charge roughly a dollar and a half a square foot for nailed down woods. Um, same for um, engineers, LVP around a dollar. Uh, but I know when you get away from here, it goes up. Mm -hmm. um, it goes up to two to three dollars a square foot according to where you live. Um, the only thing I recommend is don't just get some handyman that says, oh yeah, I can do that, I've done it before. I recommend getting, if you ain't going to do it yourself, get a professional. Right. Um, and the biggest thing if you're getting hardwood done is have a professional to check your moisture too. Um, that's one of the keys in getting a good insulation is making sure everything's correct before we do anything. Another thing is there's a lot of add-ons and they're not, they're not doing that because they want to surprise you, but it's really hard to price a job sight unseen. We've, we've done this for a long time. So typically if you'll ask your installer, you know, how much do you charge for taking up carpet, hauling carpet off? Um, you know, we want to put some on steps. Steps get very expensive, you know. There's lots of things, moving furniture. Uh, you know, do you want trim ram when you get done? Do you want it to be baseboard? Do you want quarter ram? There's a lot of unknowns. Best thing to do is have somebody come out and give you an estimate on it and look for that big number there at the bottom. That's what matters. Price per foot, doesn't matter. What's it going to cost you to get that floor installed? That's what you want to know. All right. You want to read that one? Sure. Here we go. I heard some pe I heard from some people that I shouldn't get LVP flooring because it looks really cheap compared to solid hardwood flooring. So is LVP flooring not a great look? Well, I think the the old saying is beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yes. Uh, LVP floors made today look better than they did even just a couple of years ago. Um, when you look at products like our 7 Series, the Nobility, where it has the registered embossing, the, the texture matches the picture, touching, seeing not, feeling not, I think you guys call it, um, those floors are gorgeous. They really are. You put the 7 Series in your house, didn't you? What'd you put in your house? Uh, Mills River. Mills River. You yeah. put Mills River in your house. Um, you know, we put it in our own houses. I put it, uh, I've got some in the house I just, just finished. Um, you just have to go look at it yourself. Hardwood floor, you know, doesn't have a lot of texture on it unless you're buying a hand scraped floor. So it's a it's a smooth surface. Some people like a little more texture than that. But go look at it. Get you a sample. Go see some installed floors. And 
Look for what excites you. Now we want to follow specifications. We want to we want to, we want to get a little bit deeper in the floor, other than ooh, that's pretty. Let's buy that, you know. But do some background. See what's best for you. Is is moisture going to be an issue? Is it price? Is it longevity? Do you want a floor that dents? You know, do you want one that cleans? Let's get the floor that's right for you. What's best for you? That's the saying we use. Okay, Jason. This customer says my concrete is really uneven to install hardwood flooring on. Can I add self-leveling concrete to fix the problem? Hmm. It's according to what kind of unevenness, you know, are we talking about? We dips in the floor, are we a slope floor. Um, but yes, you can get self-levelers. Uh, Maypie um, makes some Did they pronounce that? Maypie? It is, yeah. I always Maypie. wonder. Um, they make some real good self-levelers. Um, so it's just, you know, we follow the ratios and pour it out and it pretty much does the work for you. I um, used one of those one time. It, it, it was pretty neat when you, if you, like you said, you follow yeah. the ratio, if you, put the right amount of water, pour it yeah. in. It's like yeah, get out but of the way. you do have to follow the ratios and it does work great. Um, but remember, um, you, it would be a floating floor. You'd have to, you know, we're saying hardwood flooring on concrete. You're assuming it's engineered. I'm assuming we're talking engineered, so um, the answer would be yes. That was a good answer. What you can't fix really is high spots. He mentioned low spots yeah. and slopes. When you get a high spot in the floor, it's not much you can do. You can grind it, but it's a lot like work. It's also a lot like messy, yeah. but it can be done. Um, here we go. What's the best width of flooring to increase my home value? Will getting a three and a quarter versus a five inch board width really matter that much to buyers? Um, really it does. Uh, the wider the board, the more expensive it's going to be. Uh, some of it's up to do to your house. You know, if you have a bunch of small rooms or if it's chopped up a lot, you wouldn't want to use wide boards. Uh, I don't really like wide boards in areas that have big moisture swings. Here in the south, we have, we have a lot of moisture swings. So I, I personally wouldn't use like a five inch hickory in a, in a second home. I might in a first if I'm going to keep really close eye on the moisture levels. Um, but with our engineered, you can go up to five, six, even seven inch wide. They, they look good. They're very impressive floors. But, um, you know, it, it's a spec house. Or by reading this question, I think it's a spec house. It, sometimes it comes down to money as well. If you're building a house, if you're, if you're flipping a house, maybe that's, that's under 200,000, money's an issue. Two and a quarter is quite a bit cheaper than five inch. Um, you know, it depends on what's, what's, uh, what's important to you. All right, Jason. No, oh, no, this one's mine. How much does it usually cost for you to ship solid hardwood flooring? Man, that's a that's a neat question. When before we got into this, I didn't know much about shipping costs, and what I know now is that none of us know much about shipping costs. I'll tell you why I said that. Each one of the shipping companies is better at different routes, and what we didn't realize until we got into this is. If there's freight going both directions, let's say you, you live in Michigan, okay? There are so many auto parts and stuff that are shipping down, we can ship up really cheap, okay? Because otherwise those trucks are empty. By the same token, for shipping to Florida, there's almost nothing getting shipped out of Florida except produce, okay? So shipping to Florida can get kind of expensive. Shipping to the Northeast is really reasonable until we get up to about D.C., Baltimore in that area, and then it starts climbing. Once you get past New York City and up to Boston, it gets pretty pricey. So, but it varies between different vendors, and that's why we use um, a, a program that hits all the different manufacturers, or excuse me, not manufacturers, all freight freight lines. So we might have one freight line that has a has a contract to haul material from Boston to Atlanta, and they need freight going back. So go to our freight. Uh, quoting system. It's on our website. It's, it's divided up by product. Depends on where it's shipping from. You put in your information, you'll get a freight quote instantly, and we think those are as competitive as we can possibly get them. How was that? That's answer? pretty good. I probably went a little long, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, um, Jason, um, this customer says, I smell a moldy kind of smell, and I think it's my hardwood flooring, but do I have to buy a new floor? Can I remove the mold by pulling it up and laying it again? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, um, if, we're getting, if we're getting a moldy smell, we need to figure out where the, where moisture. the moisture's the coming from moisture. first. Mm -hmm. It's always moisture. Um, find out where it's coming. Um, 
get the wood took up? Are you going to be able to save it? Probably not. Um, if it's a nail down wood, usually you, they wind up breaking. Um, but we definitely need to get that took up, get rid of the mold. Um, and hope you don't have subfloor and, problems. And hope we don't, it ain't in the subfloor in your walls yeah. and sheetrock and things like that. But, uh, but no, you, I don't think you can save it and relay it. If it had mold in it, I'd probably want to get rid of it anyway. And with mold, honestly, that might be a room, room for a professional to right. come in with some of your restoration companies. Mold can be a big issue, especially if you have any respiratory problems, any allergies in the home, the children or something. Uh, you'd be careful with that, but go, go online and, and study up, see what you can find there. Now, there's so many different molds in anyway. Right, uh, right. Just to be frank with you, we don't know we much don't about know. that. That is not in no. our uh, line. No, we just do this because these guys, marketing people, told us we had to answer that question. Yep. But we really don't know much about it. Okay, Jason, can I lay my flooring into unique patterns like diamond patterns and expect the floor to last as long as laying it all parallel? Huh? Yeah, I mean, you can lay the floor. Well, it's recommended to lay your floor opposite the floor joist if we're doing a nail down. Can you do patterns in it? Yes, but if we're doing patterns in a with a pre-finished wood, it's kind of hard to do and make them look good. It's gonna uh, be very good, because you gotta cut, you're having to cut you're the having, ends off, you're losing that right, tongue groove. They ain't, they ain't all connected, you have to do a lot of face nailing. Uh, most people that do a pattern floor um, do an unfinished. Um, so after they get done, then come in and stain it, then putty everything and it, you know, everything blends. Um, as far as lasting as long, it's going to last just as long. We ain't doing anything no. to the finish. You might it, get more movement because you, your joints. Right. You're just, you may, you're more apt to get a squeak and right. spot. Because joints are there to keep a floor from moving. Right. Okay. And when you start cutting those joints off, so you can put the patterns in it. Instead of you're get just that edge is going right. to go up and down. They're going to rub against each other and that's where you're going to get It's going to cost squeak. you stability. Yeah. But as words, far, probably, as, probably don't want to do it. Probably don't want to do it, but as far as it lasting as long, yeah, it's going to last as long. All right, All here's, right. You want, let's see. Should I install hardwood or engineered hardwood in my RV? You should put engineered in your RV. Weight is an issue. Moisture is an issue. Um, engineered floors, they're engineered for a reason. They stand moisture change, temperature change much better than a solid does. I wouldn't consider putting a solid in there. Plus, there's so many small areas, you have to face nail half of it. Yeah. We have done several installs in RVs. None of them's fun. None of them. Uh, we actually like looking at people's faces when they say, how much would it cost me to, you know, to hire you to do that? And we throw a number out. And the number um, is intended for you to say, well, I ain't paying that. Good, because that's... We didn't want to do it to begin with. I think that was part of our punishment growing up is having to do RVs, wasn't it? Hey, our dad, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, dad would pick jobs for us and he would price them and then tell us to do them. I tell you, one of the last carpet jobs I, I ever did, if I told you about this, he sent me out, there was six sets of steps. Now, back in the old days, we didn't charge extra for steps. You got paid for the yardage of the carpet. So me and another fellow went out and we spent two days putting carpet on steps and it paid $150. And uh, that was my last day laying carpet. I said, Dad, we, we can't do that anymore. But we, we used to get a lot of that motor. Boats are the same way. Oh, my goodness, doing a boat. RVs are worse, though. Yeah. Uh, let's see. If I was putting flooring in an RV today, I would use an LVP, probably a snap, a click, a floating LVP, wouldn't yeah, you? Prongs or yeah, or trailers or whatever, and it'll... You won't get squeaks It'll that way. It'll much better. And if you mess up a board, you can throw it out and grab another one. Yep. Okay, are Mohawk LVPs as good as Cortex LVPs? Mohawk versus Cortex? Um, it's really hard to group it just by manufacturer. Is Ford better than Chevrolet? Well, okay, that's a bad analogy. Ford is better than Chevrolet. But can we validate that? Probably not. It's just an opinion. It's sort of the same way. Mohawk makes some great products. Uh, Mohawk makes some products I wouldn't have in my house. Cortec makes some products I wouldn't have in my house. Frankly, I, I don't like WPC floors. I know the manufacturers love them. I don't like a floor that dents that easily. That I think the allure of an LVP is the longevity and how tough it is. And WPC floors don't exemplify that. So um, Cortec, you know, all has cork back. Mohawk doesn't. Uh, what we found with the deal that, that Cortec made with us, and it's an exclusive deal, but 
I don't think the Mohawk LVPs are where we are price-wise. But are they as good? Six one, half a dozen yeah. the other. Can you use a Swiffer to clean hardwood floors? You can as long as you're using a no rinse cleaner in the Swiffer. Make sure when you buy the Swiffer that it kind of has the no rinse cleaner. Can't stress that enough. Never use a cleaner on your floor that requires rinsing because you can't get all the, all the, the residue off of it. It builds up over time and takes away from the look of your floor. All right, Jason, now this is a good question. What's the worst LVP flooring you've ever seen sold or seen in person? I don't know. Don't bring up that Mohawk purchase, okay? Uh, yeah. The worst LVP I've ever seen sold? Uh, my competition. I yeah, mean, that's right. You've got uh, the yeah. uh, No, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. Yeah, go ahead. I, three or four years ago, I was, um, I was at a show and I was buying some material. And uh, the guys at Shaw talked me into taking this product called Versailles. Uh, that was a bad one. That was a bad one. Yeah. Versailles came four different sizes in the box and it was engineered to be grouted. So when you put it down, you grouted it and it had this cute little pattern. But it, the reason they were discontinuing is because nobody wanted to grout it. So I bought this stuff. Well, how do you sell it if you don't grout it? So we had to come up with a pattern that would install without grout. And um, it was it was pretty tough. and. I think we've just now sold the last of it at 10 cents a square foot. That was probably the worst LVP floor I've ever seen. I think we still have some of it. I think we just, how about, oh look, here's a good question. What's the most scratch resistant flooring? Most scratch resistant flooring. I'll tell you what, was that one? That's one of mine. Yep. I'm going to tell you what the most scratch resistant flooring is. Shaw makes our Nobility Series 7 with, uh, they call it scuff resist platinum. The name really isn't that important. What is important is it has aluminum oxide in it. Uh, there are different finishes available. There's some ceramic bead out there. There's uh, different polyurethanes. In my opinion, since I'm the one reading the question no out loud, I think aluminum oxide on our seven series is the toughest, uh, hardest wearing, most scratch resistant finish money can buy. You got any thoughts? I no. love it. I don't know, I know, you're, yeah. And it is It is the hardest finish out there, and I know that's your favorite. Not I love it. has been. Um, and we can buy this, our, seven, our Nobility, with aluminum oxide, with the registered embossed, the wide planks, the, the easy drop in place installation for $2.99. And it's according to what company you're talking about on who they think's the toughest thing. Right. The, I, I, but aluminum oxide. There are other the, companies that use aluminum toughest. oxide. And as a general rule, everybody's yeah. most expensive product has aluminum oxide. Yeah. But all companies don't use it. Only right. about half of them do. Okay, let's see. Jason, here's your last one for the day. I want to start my first do-it-yourself flooring install in a bedroom and work my way down the hall to the living room. I don't want to make initial mistakes in my living room. Is this a good way to approach a do-it-yourself install? Uh, I say no. Um, I say start in the living room. It's usually the biggest room, and we usually want to start on the long outside wall. And what? It's usually the straightest. Um, and I don't know what we're installing. Where it's wood, vinyl plank, it don't really matter. I still like that starting point. Um, it's easy to square off of that one. Um, as far as you know, do we want to have mistakes in the bedroom and not in the living room? That don't, you know. The, the problem I is don't. you can only choose one wall to make perfect. Right. The rest of it, can it all wind up being perfect? It can, yeah. but it comes down. Is the house square? Did you make some mistakes? Yeah. When you start off that first long wall, we know that one is perfect. Right. It's the most noticeable. Yeah, and see, when we start off that wall, we know the hallway's going to be straighter, you know, because we don't want to start in the bedroom and come out and have to reverse something in the middle of our living room. Right. You know, I'd rather reverse something in the um, hallway to the bedroom. To what, why don't you why don't tell us what reversing means? Reversing means when I come, okay, say I do my bedroom and I go down the hallway. Well, the hallway, I'm going straight across the middle of the living room. Mm -hmm. Well, when I go straight across there, I'm going to have to go both directions then. Right, so you've got to rotate so one got, 180 degrees yeah. and go that way. Yes. Well, how do you do that? Because you had, well, oh, here we got tongue groove, tongue groove. Over here you got 
groove groove well that's according to what we're laying you know if we're laying a solid wood you know you reverse them they do make splines for them uh -huh. um we can do it that way um if it's engineered they don't make splines so you just reverse it and you have to face nail across through there okay um so how do you do an lvp if we're using lvp you can lay it either direction right it's just harder to do. it's just well yeah it is a little harder to do on on some some it, it ain't a huge deal but I suggest starting in the living room and marking my way back to the bedroom. That was a good answer. Thanks. Nice job. You gonna wrap this up? Uh, yeah, it's it's almost lunchtime, and uh, so we better quit, guys. Thanks. Um, we're out of questions. You can send us some more. Um, you know, you hear people say there's no such thing as a dumb question. That's not true. We love your dumb questions. We get to make fun of you. Okay. Um, not supposed to, but sometimes it slips. If you have any, uh, any questions you want to get answered in a hurry, hey, give us a call. Uh, Jason, Jason, you can reach him at any time. Um, you can reach me part of the time. Thanks.